Well, Sally Simons, the former CEO of the Tri-County Fairgrounds, has written a letter to the editor, an open letter to the community, to Sierra Wave Media. And the letter starts, Dear Eastern Sierra Community, as some of you may know, I recently pled guilty to misappropriating public funds from the Tri-County Fairgrounds. I want to apologize for taking that money from the fairgrounds. I have betrayed the trust of this community, my friends, colleagues, business associates, and my family. I am solely responsible for what I did, and I take full responsibility for it. I am truly sorry, embarrassed, and horrified by what I have done and what it means to the community that I love so much. I took my dream job, so excited to tackle what lay ahead, and worked at doing what I love. Then I made the biggest mistake of my life. In doing so, I hurt our community, the fair, its staff and board, the sponsors, volunteers, service groups, youth activities, and event partners. If there was a way to personally apologize to each and every one of you, I would. This letter is my attempt to do just that. Now the letter later continues, so I apologize for taking what was not mine from the fairgrounds and in turn the community. I am sorry to have put you all through yet another unnecessary and ugly drama and for damaging the trust and fabric of our community. I am taking responsibility for what I have done and will pay my due for those actions. Finally, the letter goes on, I believe that the Tri-County Fairgrounds is one of the greatest assets of our area. My actions should not be taken as a reflection of the fairgrounds. And it makes me incredibly sad to know that I cannot be a part of the fairgrounds' future successes after so many years of great memories and events there for me and my family. I am so, so sorry, and that is signed respect respectfully, Sally Simons. The entire letter is posted on our website, sierrawave.net. And Sierra Wave Media received the following press release. Inyo County Superior Court employees began leafleting jurors outside the courts on Monday to make them aware of a protracted contract disagreement with courts administration. And court employees have gone without a raise since 2009. The press release states when the state of California severely cut funds to the courts six years ago, employees also agreed to pay an additional 9% in medical premium costs and 7% in retirement costs in order to retain employees and avoid further cuts in service to the public. Other courts whose employees agreed to assume increased pension contributions offset the contributions with commensurate wage increases, bridging the significant salary gap faced by court employees and their families. That press release continues, court employees made these concessions with the understanding that when the economy corrected, the wages would be brought back up. A bargaining wage reopener last August resulted in no agreement. Administration made just one offer of 6%, which has been voted down by employees twice. Administration attributes the problem to underfunding by the administrative office of the courts, but the court's local budget shows significant salary funding, which has not been allocated to frontline employees, that press release states. Now, Maureen McVicker, the lead court clerk in Independence, said, quote, it can take a new court clerk up to five years to become fully trained. The court cannot afford to continue losing our skilled employees to comparable county jobs, which now pay as much as 14% more, end quote. Now that press release notes this isn't the first time court employees have had issues with local courts administration. After employees agreed to wage freezes in the last negotiations, they were surprised to learn that administrators gave themselves an increase. Now said senior court clerk and bargaining representative Trisha Fath, quote, a 6% wage increase doesn't even break us even with where we were at in 2009. Employees have flexibility in our position, but administration needs to start approaching this from a problem-solving perspective rather than take it or leave it, end quote. Now, that full press release is also posted on our website, sierrawave.net. All right, let's check in with Boeing Boeing. It's the latest effort from the Mammoth Lakes Repertory Theater. Boeing, Boeing. It's about Bernard, played by me, and his friend Robert, who have to deal with uh, my three fiancés, who usually are on a schedule 
two days Gabriella, two days Gloria, two days Gretchen, they all end up coming to the house at the same time, and it's a disaster. You're going to get married! I certainly am not. (laughs) (laughs) But but this this charming TWA girl just now, she said you were getting... Wait a second, you agreed before I heard you. Well, if you want to be technical about it, I suppose you could say we were engaged, yes. (laughs) Then you're going to get married. No. (laughs) (laughs) I am set to tell you, if you're engaged, you're going to get married. I mean, it's not only technical, it's logical, isn't it? It is not. And anyways, why do you want to get married? Do you love this girl? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not a raving mad about her. Write poems or refuse to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you would be nice. I mean, I mean think of all the, the, the social advantages. Now, those aren't to be sneezed at, are they? No, I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you want to get married, get married my way. Your way? Polygamy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ideal life. Pleasure. Variety? It's fabulous! You ought to try it! Polygamy, like lots of wives? Not wives, fiancés. You have all the advantages of married life with none of the drawbacks. Fiancés are much friendlier than wives, and you don't need all that many either. I do very well with three. Three! Three is the ideal number. Less than three would be monotonous. More than three is way too tiring. Three is the dream. (laughs) That's immoral. It's a farce. Um, it was actually written in France. I don't remember the year, but it was translated to English, and it's won a lot of awards recently on Broadway. Um, a lot of big-time actors and actresses have been playing this recently, and it's pretty popular right now. So it's a, a farce, if you're not familiar with what that is, is a comedy that is based on, like, lie upon lie upon lie upon lie. as much jokes and everything happening all at once at the same time. No rest for the wicked. <laughs> Well, it's just nonstop comedy. It's nonstop laughs. Um, from start to finish, uh, just the situations we put ourselves in, the one-liners, the uh, you know, back and forth between the characters, and the different situations I find myself in. You know, I'm cool, calm, and collected at the beginning. I have my three ladies that I'm rotating through my house. And then at the end, they're all there, and I'm flipping out. I don't know what to do. And luckily, I have my buddy Robert to see me through it, as well as my maid, Berta. Well, I just hold everything together, you know. Everybody comes to me with all the problems, and I have to fix everything. What can I say? (laughs) Now, who can that be? All this coming and going, it's no life for a maid. No (laughs) life for anyone. (laughs) Just me. (laughs) Oh, it's you, monsieur. (laughs) <laughs> could you? No, I could not. <laughs> you can see the show February 4th through the 21st, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 o'clock, Sundays at 4 o'clock, and all you have to do to get tickets is go to Mammoth Lakes Repertory Theater.org. All right, looks like good times. We'll be back with more news. <laughs>